We are back. Happy Monday, the 19th day of September 2022. I am Dan Kutz. It's down the road we go. Another exciting week of local television entertainment, local television information, and just plain local television. It is uh, 50 degrees, a little hazy out there, but air quality right now is good. In the Wenatchee Valley, it is uh, not quite as good in Kashmir and Leavenworth, but it's not, it's moderate there. Uh, we're okay, we're in the good category, but it kind of feels like it did almost all of last week when we had all that smoke in the haze. Uh, but it's not bad, and we're going to see some more wind, kind of like we had on Friday. Those details are coming up. Quick heads up, Highway 2 still closed because of the Bolt Creek fire. This is uh, well over a week now. Fire's burning pretty close to the highway. They got big trees that are burning and falling down, either on the highway or close to it. They're going to reassess the situation again today, so that's added, put uh, added stress on I-90 for those of you who need to travel uh, over the mountain passes. Uh, your options are limited. We'll keep a close eye on that. We have some news to get to. We have a lot of sports to get to. How about them Seahawks? Anyway, and a bad weekend for the Mariners. Uh, they've lost uh, three in a row now to the Angels. They have the fourth and final game of their four-game series this afternoon. We'll talk about that when we get to sports and everything else that you need to get your day going. And we're going to play the interview I did last week with Linda Hagland because tomorrow is the big job fair at the local Televent center at the Pibus Public Market. If you're looking for work or maybe changing careers, a lot of employers will be down there. And if you're a prospective employee, you might want to hook up with those folks. That's tomorrow at the Pibus. Linda will give you those details, talk a little downtown, and talk to you about her pending retirement. Good for Linda. Let's uh, start our tour. Let's not waste any more time. Let's see what we have out there. With our cameras, uh, that's a beautiful view of Bluckyville. That looks to be the Lake Wenatchee area, I'm guessing, Tucker. It is. So we're peeking over the ridge there. That's Dirty Face to your right. Somewhere down there is a lake. Uh, again, it continues to burn. Those fires uh, started over a month ago. I think it's about six weeks old, the two fires, uh, the Irving Peak fire and the other fire. <laughs> the White River Fire. Again, burning in very thick forested terrain. Uh, it's dense. It's just kind of sitting there, and they're going to pretty much just make sure it doesn't get cattywampus, and so far it hasn't. In the meantime, you're just going to be stuck with the smoke up there anyway, pretty thick in the Lake Wenatchee area. Camber 2. And there we go. That has got to be Stein. The Stein camera looking back up the valley again. The weather, the the weather, the the smoke is much more prevalent and dense. The farther, the closer you get to the fires. Uh, right now, Leavenworth and Kashmir are in the uh, ha not, uh, not hazardous but moderate range. They're in the 70s here in the Wenatchee Valley. We're in the 30s, but that gives you an idea. There's no wind, and of course, the relative humidity is at its highest this time of the day, at 76 percent, and that brings the smoke closer to the surface. Ca surface camera three. Oh boy, uh, it's got to be the oh, whoa, whoa. Briefly, we saw the Waterville camera. I'm sure that's the Waterville camera. It looks like they have a little haze up there as well. Can't quite make out the seat of Douglas County, but it's up to the top of that area that we go. They're going to have some blowing dust tomorrow, by the way. We have a little slide to show you that in just a little bit. And the fourth camera looked to be the Cross East or the Wenatchee Heights East camera. And there it is. Our main camera is still on that slow boat from China. So we have that one to work with, but as you can still see, it's kind of laying low over there with the smoke and the haze. But with some wind on the way, a push of northerly winds is in store for Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to scour out the skies once again. It's not going to be too bad. As a matter of fact, here is a slide from the National Weather Service. Uh, pretty significant winds in many locations. Here in the Wenatchee Valley, not too windy tomorrow. This is tomorrow and Wednesday for the most part. For the valley, it's good. The, the winds will be relegated just to Tuesday. But for Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, if you're on I-90, uh, you're going to find some blowing dust. If you're uh, on Highway 97 to the north of us, uh, Riverside to Brewster, blowing dust there. And on Highway 2 between Waterville and Davenport, of course, the, field, the fields have been plowed. Not a lot to hold the soil and the dirt to the earth. And you combine that with some pretty strong afternoon winds, and it could get a little on the tricky side in those locations. Again, here in the valley, we're not looking at too bad of a wind, but we're certainly going to be quite windy on Tuesday. In fact, from the National Weather Service, your forecast looks something like this. Sunshine for the most part today with a high of 79. A couple of things I want to let go of you. Saturday, we only got to 67. Our normal high is 77. So on Saturday, it was pretty cool. Then yesterday, we warmed up to 73. 
Uh, we'll get to 79 today with lots of sunshine, 46 for the overnight low. Sunshine tomorrow, but a bit on the wind side, especially uh, on Tuesday afternoon. We, we could see gusts here in the valley, about 25 miles an hour. Again, other locations, stronger gusts than that. 52 for the overnight low, 82 on Wednesday with lots of sunshine. We have a bit of a cooling trend in the middle of the week on Thursday and Friday, and then a warming trend on Saturday and Sunday. Friday is the first full day of autumn. The autumnal equinox is Thursday night at 8.04. And speaking of night, check this out. Last Monday, one week ago, we had 12 hours and 45 minutes of daylight. Today, 12 hours and 20 minutes of daylight. We're losing almost four minutes of daylight now a day as we trip. We get just about four more days of uh, summertime left, and that's it. Then we start going on the other side of that equation. And it is six minutes after the hour, a one-minute break. And then your Monday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Right now, it costs a hundred bucks to fill this up and a thousand bucks to fill this up. We're all feeling it. Families and businesses getting squeezed because of broken supply chains and corporate greed. I'm Congresswoman Kim Schreier and I'm leading the fight to suspend the federal gas tax to get prices down. I'm holding Big Oil accountable so they stop ripping us off. I approve this message and I'll keep fighting to bring down gas prices for you. This could be the view out of your office window. North Central Washington is probably one of the most beautiful places to live and you get the experience at all as a transit operator. Link Transit coach operators enjoy full family benefits, paid CDL training, a state-of-the-art fleet, and the satisfaction of being part of a progressive, community-minded team. We have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, it's a good group of people. We're all kind of like a family. If you like this view, Link has a seat for you. The next operator training starts soon. Apply today at linktransit.com. If it wasn't for the haze, we'd have a beautiful morning, but we got smoke and haze. It is 50 degrees. We'll be up into the upper 70s today with some sunshine, although it looks like it's going to be filtered sunshine. A little wind event coming our way Tuesday afternoon. Bit of a cool down by the middle of the week, and then we warm up to a very pleasant first weekend of autumn. It's seven minutes after the hour. Northbound traffic on Blue Pass was delayed for several hours on Friday afternoon after a semi lost control and tipped on its side. According to the Washington State Patrol, shortly before 4.30, a semi towing a trailer was traveling northbound six miles north of the summit when the driver lost control while negotiating a left curve, drove onto the right shoulder, re-entered the roadway, and then tipped onto the passenger side. The driver, 39-year-old Benjamin B. Celestin of Miami, Florida, was not injured, but he does face charges of driving with wheels off the roadway. The northbound lane of Blue Pass was closed for over four hours after that accident. The Greater Wenatchee Irrigation District, which brings water to about, uh, oh, happy birthday, Jimmy Fallon. The Greater Wenatchee, and happy birthday to Bill Medley. Uh, the Greater Wenatchee Irrigation District, which brings water to about uh, 10,000 acres of orchards and homes, all the way from East Wenatchee to Chelan. They're considering fee hikes up to 77%. District Manager Craig Gaselnik says most users will see a substantial increase if the Irrigation Board approves the 2023 budget as proposed. Agricultural users would see their rates go from about $44 per acre foot of water to more than $78. Home repairs would go from paying an annual charge of $200 to $250 to $300. Guy Selnick said the change would update the district's antiquated fee system and it also boost the budget after the district was forced to pay for more than a million dollars in emergency repairs. The district uses 60-year-old infrastructure built by the Department of Reclamation, and Guy Selnick says it's failing at a rate that's hard to keep up with. Public comment, as you might imagine, is encouraged. Directors will discuss the proposed rate change at their October 4th meeting. Democratic 8th District Congresswoman uh, Dr. Kim Schreier will debate her Republican opponent, Matt Larkin. This will happen on October 28th at Central Washington University in Ellensburg. It's the first announced face-to-face -face meeting of the two candidates for a seat that has drawn national attention as Republicans seek to gain control of the U.S. House. The Washington State Debate Coalition announced the debate on Friday in addition to two scheduled debates between Democratic U.S. Senator Patty Murray and her opponent, Republican Tiffany Smiley. 
The Schreier-Larkin debate will be at McConnell Auditorium beginning at 7 p.m. It'll be in front of a live audience. It'll be broadcast on multiple platforms. Details on the broadcast have not yet been released, however. Murray and Smiley are scheduled to meet October 23rd in Spokane, then again October 25th in Seattle. An escapee who hid from police in Wenatchee in a Wenatchee shed until they blew open the door to arrest him is going to serve about five and a half years in prison. 48-year-old Rigoberto Lucia Reyna pled, pled guilty to two counts of burglary and received a 68-month sentence Wednesday in Chelan County Superior Court. Lucia was jailed awaiting trial for the burglaries when he walked away from an inmate work detail last April during the Apple Blossom Festival. Police spotted him a few weeks later near North Franklin Avenue and 3rd Street and pursued him on foot until he took refuge in that shed. When Lucia refused to come out, officers used flashbangs and an explosive charge to extract him. Charges of escape and resisting arrest were dropped Wednesday as part of his plea. A Bonanchi man received a 90-day sentence Thursday for firing a gunshot towards a motorist outside of his home. 36-year-old Roberto Alareno pled guilty to second-degree assault and resisting arrest in the January 2021 incident. That's when he fired a shot from a handgun in the 300 block of Fuller Street. The motorist, by the way, was not struck. Arlano's guilty plea in Chelan County Superior Court allowed him to avoid a more serious charge of first-degree assault. Once his jail term is complete, he'll spend a year on supervision with the Department of Corrections. And finally, Grant County health officials are investigating a case of monkeypox in that county. That's the first to be reported. In North Central Washington, the county health department said this week the patient is in good condition, quarantining at home, and investigators are working to identify that person's contacts. The monkeypox virus, or MPV, is spread through close contact and can result in an itching and painful rash. More than 500 cases have been identified in Washington, most of them in King County. 14 people have been hospitalized with monkeypox in our state. And that's what's making news at 12 minutes after the hour. Grant Olson is back from his three-day vacation. He'll be handling the news and the weather. Eric Granston with sports. And with the preview, here's Jefferson Robbins. Good morning, Dan, and happy Monday. I hope you enjoyed your nice, cool weekend. I got some serious gardening done. You won't see me here tonight since Grant Olson will be back in the big chair to bring you the NCW Life evening news. Coming up tonight, plans are afoot for a debate between Democratic Congresswoman Kim Schreier and her Republican challenger Matt Larkin for the 8th, 8th District Congressional seat. That district encompasses all of Chelan County and Wenatchee, as well as much of East Wenatchee, so there's a lot on the line for NCW voters. Of course, Grant will have your whole week mapped out with the weather forecast. Eric Granstrom will bring you up to speed on every throw and tackle from this weekend's sports. All of that starts tonight, 5, 6, and 10 p.m on the NCW Life Evening News. Hope to see you then, Dan. Thank you very much, Jefferson. Same goes to you, by the way. And don't forget, if you got a news tip or you just want to drop us a note and say hi, look at the bottom of your screen, our Facebook page. You use the Messenger app if you are so inclined. Our email address, news at ncwlife.com or our website, ncwlife.com, has a little contact us icon at the top of the page. After a break, sports. The obscure holiday today in history, some celebrity birthdays, a brand new opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. And we revisit our uh, conversation with Linda Haglin, the big job fair being put on by the Chamber of Commerce and the Wenatchee Downtown Association is tomorrow at the Pibus. Linda will give you those details when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Businesses and individuals have trusted the experienced professionals of financial alternatives for their retirement and investment needs for 40 years. They offer a broad range of investments, annuities, and insurance solutions for people and businesses throughout Washington. Financial alternatives will assist you in making informed decisions for your future. Call Financial Alternatives today and meet with their advisors. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled out the new line of custom e-bikes. They have three-way adjustable folding e-bikes and full-size mountain e-bikes. Pedal assist and a throttle makes them a perfect fit for any rider. Green Motion e-bikes located in the Mills Brothers building. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up in Anchi Valley. It's Wake Up in Anchi Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel.
What a wrap for the hour. The 19th uh, Bridge of Sportsmanship game between Eastmont and Wenatchee was a case of big plays against not enough plays. Wildcats won easily. 56 to 24. Following Eastmont's opening touchdown of the game, it was a 62-yard 62-yard run by Colby King. The Panthers hit a 31-yard field goal. That was 7 to 3. That after that, it was all Eastmont. The Wildcats scoring on plays of 42 yards, 73 yards, 47 yards, 65 yards, 51 yards, 13 yards, and 35 yards. They win their sixth straight Bridge of Sportsmanship game. Eric Granstrom and Paul Collard had the call Friday night, right here on the NCW Life Channel. Eastmont with new uniforms. They got the numbers on the sleeves as well. Hand off to King around the right side. Big hole. Look out to the 50. He's got one man to beat, and nobody's going to catch Kobe King. He's going to take it for the touchdown for Eastmont. Now the first score of the Bridge of Sportsmanship is 62 yards. Officials make sure they're all ready to go. The snap awaited here from center. It's good. The spot is good. The kick away. It's got the distance, and it's good. Defensive foul. It would go from the previous spot, so they did adjudicate that correctly. Gale back to pass on the first play of the uh, th second quarter, and it's going to go for a touchdown on the throw over the middle to Kobe King. Gale sends King in motion, fakes the handoff, back to pass, looking downfield, throwing deep, and coming open. The ball is caught by Ruffins. Ruffins running away. Ruffins into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastmont on the first play of the series from 73 yards. Clock winds with 3.53 to go. He went out of bounds, so it stopped the clock. Again, handoff this time. It's Ruffins again. Ruffins picking his way. He's to the 25, to the 10, to the 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastmont, as they blow it open on a big hole around the left side for Austin Ruffins. The 14 is where Wenatchee has the football right now, threatening to get their first seven of the ball game. Throws over the middle. The ball is caught. And just like that, Rivers Cook will haul it in for the touchdown for Wenatchee from 14 yards out. Eastmont going to go with a hurry-up offense. Second down and five. Gale, I think, looked like he bobbled the snap, hands it off to Peterson. He gets through the line, gets through everybody, and he's going to get all the way to the end zone. 65 yards on the touchdown run, and again, Eastmont, big play, cat night tonight. Martinez stays in the backfield to the right of Jackson Bishop. And Bishop tried to hand it off, fumbled it, and now dives into the end zone for the touchdown Panthers. Second down and nine from their own 49-yard line. Split out wide right, Adrian Ruffins. Watch out for him. Handoff is to Colby King. Look out. He's got room to the 40, 35, the one man to beat. He's going to take it. He's going to run. He's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastmont from 40. Make that 51 yards. First down from the 13. Turn, handoff, Peterson looking for another touchdown here in the second half, and he will get in. Touchdown, he spawned. Devereaux hands it off to Flugi. Flugi dancing, and he will get into the end zone. He's close. Yes, touchdown, Wenatchee. So everybody's getting the mix here tonight. And you can't tell the youngsters, well, you know, the game's out of reach, just lay down. That's not going to happen. Here's another dive play and looking towards a varsity touchdown for Eastmont is Julian Cortez. And he stayed alive and he will be into the end zone for the touchdown. Total domination here, especially in the second half by the Eastmont Wildcats as they have now beaten Wenatchee seven times in a row. For the sixth time in a row, they will claim the Bridge of Sportsmanship Trophy, and it will stay right here in the trophy case at Eastmont High School after they defeat the Wenatchee Panthers 56-24. to All right, the Les Schwab scoreboard in Big Nine play. Moses Lake traveled to Yakima, the gateway to Moxie, and came away with a 47-13 win over Ike. West Valley won his Big Nine opener over Davis. Sunnyside lost a non-league game to the Kennewick Lions. We'll have one A.G. and Eisenhower this Friday at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl with uh, Eric and Grant on the call. Pre-game 6.30 kickoff at 7 o'clock. Cashmere continues to roll in his non-league season. They beat College Place on the road 47-6. Quincy toppled Tenasket for their first win of the season. Okanagan won the backyard brawl. Chalant clobbered Clay Ellum and Cascade got the better of Brewster. Central Washington B-League teams who are in action on Friday night included Liberty Bell who defended their home field 
uh, with a 50 to nothing win over Elmira Cooley, Heartline, England, Dan, and John Ford Coley. Bridgeport, shout out to Soap Lake. Manson beat Priest River Saturday, Eastern Washington at Eastern Washington University, 32 to 12. Well, that would be cool if Manson actually beat Eastern. That would be an upset on the girls' soccer pitch on Saturday. Eastmont topped Moses Lake 4 to 1. Wenatchee, no problems with Sunnyside. Cascade over Liberty Bell, over Lake. Edge Cashmere, Quincy shut out Warden. Okanagan, Blank Clayellum. Reardon beat Brewster. Davenport over Tenasket. We'll be at Leave Off the Field of the Apple Bowl for live soccer action tomorrow night. When Etchie will host West Valley, it'll be a good game, and we'll have it for you at 7 o'clock right here on this very television station. In prep volleyball action, Curlew beat Pateras on Friday. On Saturday, Chelan became the smallest school to claim the Sun Dome Invitational Crown. That's pretty cool. Afraid to down Eastmont in volleyball and Hanford over Moses Lake. OMAC beats Colville. On the college football scoreboard from Saturday, Central Washington racked up, racked up over 500 yards of offense. They beat Simon Frazier. 40-7, Cameron Ward, 299 yards, four touchdowns. The Cougars beat Colorado State 38-7. Coach, Coach Jake Dickert said the Cougars are still learning after improving to 3-0. and Well, I'm just, I'm proud of their efforts. And, and the best part of it is it was a hard-fought win. You know, I know Colorado State played a complete game, and they weren't just going to shut it down in the second half. And there's still a lot to learn. You know, we, we still didn't play a complete game. You'd like the second half you know, to keep firing and do some things, but there's a lot that we continue to learn from from winning football games. And I think that's a, a good thing. You know, now when you're three games in, you really start to reveal who you are. And, uh, you know, offense can have its moments. Uh, you know, we weren't as good as we need to be up front to win big games. And as we get into Pac-12 play here, you know, that's got to make sure it was something that we firm up. But uh, when you play with effort, uh, you care about each other, and you do the little things, you can win a, a lot of games. Huskies beating 11th ranked Michigan State 39 to 28. They held the Spartans to 42 yards rushing. Michael Penix Jr. throwing for 397 yards and four touchdowns. Kalen DeBoer, the coach of the Huskies, pretty happy guy. Oh man, wow, that was uh, that was uh, fun, and uh, couldn't be more proud of uh, these guys, the team, the coaches. Um, they're having a lot of fun in that locker room right now. You know, they continue to uh, just every day. You know, um, show how much they want it and, uh, you know, building that confidence and energy. And uh, I just think it showed how we came out of the blocks right away and, you know, stuck to the game plan. We did a great job stuffing the run. You know, it started with the first drive and, uh, you know, offensively continue to stay efficient and make the plays that these guys are capable of doing. And, you know, uh, just uh, super proud of the way we started and, you know, really played almost a full game there. And by the way, Eastern Washington had a great weekend. They didn't have to play anybody. Uh, bad weekend for the Seahawks. Despite Trey Lance going down with a broken ankle, he's done for the rest of the year. Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers beat Seattle yesterday, 27-7. It wasn't even that close. Garoppolo threw for a touchdown, ran for another. He takes over the reins of the 49ers offense from here on out. Coach Pete Carroll says uh, the Seahawks, well, Seahawks weren't very good. What a distance from one week to the next. And, uh, and uh... The league just reminds you how you know how you get humbled, and uh, we didn't do anything like we wanted to today in the line of scrimmage, on either side of the ball. Um, we, we didn't we didn't deal with it right. Um, we had ten penalties. They had one. We had three turnovers. They had none. You know, I mean, it was just it, it was a it was it, it's really hard to win this football game today the way we did it. The Seahawks' only score came on a blocked field goal and an 86-yard return by Michael Jackson. The Seahawks were back home Sunday against Atlanta. The entire conference is now 1-1. One one. The Rams survived against Atlanta. Arizona came from behind to beat the Raiders in overtime, 29-23. Tough weekend for the Mariners. They've lost three in a row now to the Angels. Eugenio Suarez went on the 10-day injured list. He's got a broken right index finger. Julio Rodriguez and Mitch Hanniger, they're out with back problems. The offense has struggled without them. LA won yesterday, 5-1. to one. The two teams wrapped up the four-game set this afternoon at 107 on Route Sports Northwest. Another American League West play on Sunday from our friends at Les Schwab. Tampa Bay beat Texas. Houston blasted Oakland. The Astros, by the way, have clinched a playoff berth, but not the division. In the wildcard race, Toronto leads the AL wildcard chase by two games now over the Mariners. Despite losing to the Orioles on Sunday, the Rays are a half game behind the Blue Jays. The Orioles just four games back of the Mariners, and the White Sox continue to close the gap. They beat Detroit. 11-5, Minnesota's hopes remain alive with a 3-0 win over Cleveland. If Jeremy and his staff at the Bonanche Valley Super Bowl are sleeping in today, they deserve it. 
They had three days of racing over the weekend. It began with testing and time trials on Friday, as well as the main event race for the Angel Bell Bonds, Bandoleros, Wyatt Flowers, all the way from Palmer, Alaska. Wins the race, Yakima's Devin Norman grabbed the checkered flag Saturday in the Bandos A main. To Saturday we go, Afreda's Cannon DeLong was the winner of the A main two for the Bandos on Saturday. Caden Steinberg beat out his brother Tyler for the Bando A main win on Sunday. And Cannon DeLong won his second main event of the weekend in his Bandolero on Sunday afternoon. Jay Evans made it a season sweep in the Plum Perfect Roadrunner main final of the season. Christian Foster was second, followed by Kyle Spaulding. Tumwater's Parker Stevens grabbed the checkered flag in the Inex Legends main event. That was on Saturday. Levy Jones took his number 92 car to the front of the pack on Sunday, and the Puyallup driver won the Legends race on Sunday. Then the big race of the night, Saturday night, the Jerry Birchauer 125 for the Jerry's Auto Supply Pro Late Models, and the owner of the track, Garrett Evans, proved that age is just a number as a 64-year-old beat Alan Kress and Jay Evans to the finish line. East Wenatchee's Nick Frazier won the Dixie in an air conditioning Thunder Car Main on Sunday. Wenatchee's Luke Shaw second. South Clay Ellum's Andrew Aper third. I'd had no idea there was a South Clay Ellum. And then they saved the best for last on Sunday with the Neil Newberry 125 for the Northwest Super Late Model Series. Yakima's Caden Anderson up to the task. He took the win. Sheila's Andy Beeman was second, followed by Hermiston's Ken Bonney. And that is a wrap for another season at the WVSO. And it was a rough weekend for the Wenatchee Wild. And that Dakotas, they dropped all three of their exhibition games. Luckily, the games don't count. They lost Friday to Sioux Falls 7-4, Saturday to Sioux City 6-0, and Sunday to Fargo 5-0. The regular season begins this Friday. The Wild will be on the road in Surrey. They don't play their first home game for another month, October 21st. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Monday. I need coffee. The obscure holiday, I had three to choose from. Today is National Gymnastics Day. Today is an International Talk Like a Pirate Day. I hate that day. National Butterscotch Pudding Day. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It's my favorite pudding, butterscotch pudding. Vanilla's good, chocolate's good, but butterscotch and pudding really go well together. Butterscotch is like the cousin of caramel, I guess, as they will. Uh, you make caramel by breaking down white sugar uh, until it melts, then it gets to darken, and then it separates. And butterscotch is the same way, only they make it with brown sugar and butter. So they're kind of kind of the same, but quite not. I don't know. It is believed that uh, butterscotch was invented by Samuel Parkinson in 1817. If he did, he's not collecting royalties anymore. Enjoy a nice cup of butterscotch pudding today. Today in history, I forgot to print it up. <laughs> I'll wing it. After, uh, let's see, 12 years, 13, 15 years in existence? Yeah, 15 years and 88 games, the New Orleans Saints finally did something as a franchise. They won a game on the road by shutout. The Saints, led by Kenny Stabler, shuts out the Chicago Bears 10-0 for their first ever road shutout in franchise history. It took them 88 games and 15 years. That's a long time. That was on this date in 1982. Uh, on this date in, what do we got? Throw it up. I didn't print it up, you, uh, Tucker. Oh, yes, the Unabomber Manifesto. At the request of the Attorney General of the United States, Janet Reno, who said, we're told that if you, the Times and the Post, print the Unabomber's Manifesto in its entirety, he won't kill people anymore and they agreed to do so. And on this date, the New York Times and the Washington Post printed in its entirety the Unabomber Manifesto. A lot of controversy in there. Why are you kowtowing to this guy who kills people? But they did it. They printed it on this date in 1995. And finally, baseball history. On this date, in, 19, in 2011, Mariano Rivera, the reliever of the New York Yankees, Gets the, gets the Twins in the bottom of the ninth inning for his 602nd career save, passing Trevor Hoffman to become number one on the all-time saves list. And it went something like this. Tucker does not have the video. Let me recreate it. He struck him out, and then they celebrated. Let's move on to birthdays, shall we? 
If you didn't hear already, by the way, it's it's Jimmy Fallon's birthday. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, now you have the video? Yeah, let's play the video. 0-2, two, two outs, ninth inning, Yankees up 6-4. Rivera sets and deals. Strike three, ball game over, Yankees win, and it's perfect because the greatest closer in history now has the most saves in history. With 6-0-2, he moves ahead of Trevor Hoffman, and he stands alone atop the closer mountain. That was on this date in 2011, which means it was Jimmy Fallon's 37th birthday. In the meantime, let's do birthdays if Tucker is ready. There we go. Uh, Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson. That was his real name. Born and raised in Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, was born in the state in 1928. Uh, of course, changed his name to Adam West. Moved to Hollywood. Became Batman. Or as my mom used to say, the Batman. He was born in the state in 1928, died in 2017 at the age of 88. Brian Epstein, the manager of the Beatles, who discovered this group and said, if I'm going to clean up your image and get you a record contract, you might just make it in this business. He did both. His business dealings weren't exactly the best, but he's the one to put the Beatles on the map, and they would not have become the Beatles without Brian Epstein, who died of a drug overdose in 1967 at the age of 32. Bill Medley. One half of the Righteous Brothers also produced a number of their hits, including Soul and Inspiration, Bill Medley, 82 years old today, still performs. And I'm told in my earpiece, it's Jimmy Fallon's birthday today. This is news to me. I had no idea. Jimmy Fallon, the sixth host of The Tonight Show. He's had the gig since 2014. Jimmy Fallon is 48 years old today. It's 32 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break. We have a brand new opinion from Mike Matt Dobb Mignotti, I know, because we've never aired it before. And then in case you missed it last week, my conversation with Linda Haglin for the WDA, the Wenatchee Downtown Association. You're watching, I hope still, a Monday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think I'll sell my veggies at the market. Do you even remember to water the house plants? I do this? You can do this. Hey, we need to build a home office. We We're adding another bathroom. I think I'll study programming. Bro, you even connect your phone to Bluetooth. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank, privately owned, locally invested. As the sun sets in Chelan County, the lights come on. Birds, bugs, and us. We all need the night sky. Give our pollinators a little love. Add outdoor lighting controls to your local business. Chelan PUD can pay up to 100% of your new lights and lighting controls that save energy, save money, and help protect our night sky. With way bigger incentives from Chelan County PUD, now through December 31st. Did you know that nearly 50% of pet poisoning cases involve human medications and prescription drugs? Sometimes the culprit's a curious dog, but cats get into their share of trouble as well. Other times, pet owners mistakenly give their pets their own medications that are safe to people but toxic to their pets. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. Go to pawsandclawsvh.com for a complete list of medications to avoid or call 888-PAWS. Future Major League players will be suiting up here in the Wenatchee Valley next summer. The Wenatchee Apple Sox made the postseason this past season and are already looking ahead to another fun summer in 2023. Experience every strikeout and watch every home run ball fly over the fence by purchasing season tickets today at a value affordable for the entire family. Email info at applesox.com or call 665-6900 to purchase season tickets or learn about hosting an Apple Sox player. As the sun sets on another hot summer, let the experts at Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa winterize and close your pool. Closing your swimming pool is the most important service to get right. Letting the professionals from Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa close your pool will ensure that you won't cost yourself thousands of dollars in damage next year. 
Want to save a little money? Consider dropping the water level yourself and save. Don't wait. Blue Lagoon's pool closing schedule is filling up quickly. Call today. Everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, I did an opinion piece here that was played on Wake Up Wenatchee, Dan Kunz's show, uh, that criticized ads for investment opportunities. And I mentioned that what I felt was the nonsense of running such an ad on the local radio station, KPQ. Now, Rosie, my wife, heard this and she said, well, you're going to get in trouble. And I said, well, who, KPQ? I said, what's KPQ going to do? They're going to send Dave Bernstein to come beat me up? <laughs> Hey, Rosie laughed and I laughed and that was the end of it. Well, this is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. I mean, I think that's the end of it. Uh, you don't think they'll really do that, do you? Yahoo, Wenatchee Valley. Collins is having a BOGO sale beginning September 6th through September 15th. Here's how it works. Buy one red tag item and get the second red tag item of lesser value for free. That's right. Buy one, get one free. We have sundresses, shorts, tees, capris, etc. Fall is on its way and Collins is ready with beautiful tops, sweaters, jackets, and jeans. Fabulous boots and shoes from Soft, Fly, and Jamboo. Exceptional service at Collins in downtown Wenatchee. Hey, everyone. Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're going to answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chair on the other side. You can move this one right here. Time great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. When I was about 16, I got in a relationship. He um, hit me for the first time in front of his daughter. He physically abused me in front of my children. I couldn't do it no more. Sage was there for me when I needed them. I didn't hear a lecture from them. I didn't hear anything but just acceptance. And that's what I needed at the time. And they help you with everything that you need to move on in life and heal. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control.
And we are back here on Wake Up in Angie Valley. I am Dan Coons, making her very first appearance, by the way, on this program. The executive director of the WDA, Linda Hagland, who a couple of months ago told me, you know, at the end of the year, I'll be stepping down and doing something new, not really retiring. Mm -hmm. And I kept that under my uh, mm -hmm. my hat because you asked me to, but now it's out there because you told the city council last Thursday. It is. It'll be the end of February. And a lot happens in my world around the first of the year. There's reporting, there's accreditation. So it isn't really fair to dump that all on somebody. So I'll be staying till the end of February. We have an annual dinner toward that time, and that'll be my last um, official duty. And yeah, it's, it's time to um, turn the reins over. Our organization is strong and healthy, and it's time for new vision. And I'm good with that. And you told your board about your decision quite some time ago. Mm, just, I did. Again, it's been kind of on the QT. It is, yeah. Uh, but that gives them lots of time it to does. find your replacement. It does, but you know, like everything else, you don't really get on it till you have to, so it's the have to time getting on it. So we'll open up um, with a job description in November, and they'll start the hiring process, and um, we have a good, strong board, and they'll figure this out. And I'm really proud of them, the conversation with, because we're connected to a state Main Street program, the conversation with our state coordinator is not replacing me. It's where does this organization want to be in the future, and how do we hire for that, right? To set someone up for success, you don't go, you have to do it like the last one did. You go, okay, what's new? And I'm, I'm really proud of the board for looking at it that way and walking through, where do we want to be? There's a lot happening. So it'll be a fun time for someone to take this A over. person in your position has to deal with landlords and tenants and governmental agencies, uh, a whole raft of different personalities and people. What's the number one skill your replacement's mm -hmm. gonna have to bring to the table when that time comes in February? They have to be a people person. It is so relationship-based to what we do with our sponsors, with our you know patrons that come to downtown, like you said, business and property owners. It's relationship-based. We, we pride ourselves on being the uh, connector, the place people come to to connect dots and help people. So that skill more than anything else. And you can't really have an opinion on anything, right? We have to just be there to be supportive, um, give information as it's needed, and we don't have the luxury of being opinionated. We're just, um, we're a small nonprofit that really cheerleads downtown, and that's everybody in downtown. Yeah, not the, just the ones we like. <laughs> the WDA is basically a, a two-person organization. It's you and your assistant, yeah. and that's... Yeah. And that's right about it. A couple of years ago, right before COVID hit, you were supposed to, the Wenatchee Downtown Association and the city of Wenatchee was supposed to host the Revitalized Conference, which uh -huh. happens uh, every year. It does. Uh, spread amongst the various uh, local downtown associations uh -huh. in our state. It didn't happen. It didn't in happen. In 2020, it didn't happen last year, but it's back. Yeah. So on um, October 19th through the 21st, we'll be hosting Revitalized Washington. So it is a requirement if you're a Main Street. So there's 36 like us in the state of Washington, plus little small communities wanting to be a Main Street, have that accreditation. So they'll be coming here and spread out all throughout the community. There'll be sessions in Pibus. There'll be sessions, obviously, at the convention. Center. Um, the cooks have opened up the theaters for us during the day when they're not using it, so there'll be sessions there. People come from all over the state to educate, um, collaborate. It's a fun two and a half days. A lot of people are moving downtown. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of apartment buildings that are going up near the river on Worthen Street. There continues to be a sizable yeah. boom along the river. Uh, developers aren't going to build hotels, motels, and apartments unless they think there's a market for it. That's got to be good news for your organization. It really is good news. And um, this organization, when I took this over over 11 years ago, has changed dramatically. Oh, but the change will happen in the next three to five years. With everything happening with lineage, with the PUD moving out, with what Widener is doing, there'll be a lot of change. What an exciting time, like I said, for someone to move us into the future now. I, I can't wait. It really is a thriving downtown, and we're really proud of that and and it's always been the showcase of Wenatchee and it remains that and I think that's um that's kind of a feather in our cap here I should probably ask you what are you going to do on 
March 1st. You're going to sleep in? Uh, oh, I never sleep in. Watch, you know, I'm my mother's daughter. Okay. I'm up way early. <clears throat> it's, uh, I just, I don't know yet what it looks like. Um, I'll never not do something. I just don't know what that something is. What is it this season in my life? Um, where will, what do I want to do? And I don't know that yet, Dan. I just know really, I'm really for certain that if organizations are going to grow, then um, you need new vision. You need new people right and I'm excited for that part for this organization um this is home I'll never be far away but um, I'm looking forward for the future I really am speaking of the future let's talk about some of the events when we have Linda here by the way yeah. making her first appearance on this television this week. Program. first Fridays are back now the, the first Friday in October is late it's not till like the seventh that's right but it's still on it so is. a mm -hmm. little refresher on what that is so there is an ongoing effort called the first Friday's art walk and so we're complementing that with first Friday's downtown so so you can go on our website. There's a QR code everywhere you can click on and tell you what's happening downtown. There's been music and all kinds of fun stuff happening, and we'll continue that effort throughout the year. Um, so businesses tell us they're going to have this or host this, and we post that. So First Fridays are ongoing. How important is it to have constant events coming and going at the New America Performing Arts Center and at the Wenatchee Convention Center? I mean, that's, that's a big one, isn't it? It is, and as we lose that influx of employees next year from the PUD, um, all of these things that happen support the businesses and restaurants in downtown, and it's really important that we have a healthy pack, that we have a healthy businesses, that we have healthy downtown, because where do you come, right? Where do you bring people? You walk through our great historic downtown, and that activity with the pack, I'm seeing more later activity, which is something that people have been asking for forever. Um, can we stay open a little later? Can things be happening a little later and first Fridays is a little later and um, in the evening and I think we're seeing more and more of that so that will be on uh, Friday October uh, 7th and then on um, Monday October 31st some sort of holiday kids dress up yeah, in costumes yeah. and we get them all hopped up on sugar back again well and during covid we had generous donations to help us provide the candy for the businesses because it's a big deal last year was on a sunday omg it was yeah, big it was crazy. but we'll be monday from three until five and once again um goodfellow brothers and dave and sandy galatly gave us money and thanks to the plaza super jet i was able to source candy so i sourced a lot of candy. So we'll shut the avenue down between 2nd and Arondo with both of those remaining open and the businesses come out and we trick or treat the avenue and once again. And uh, for the adults out there, you might want to circle November 12th on your calendar. It's your chance to do a little drinking wine and having a good time. Holiday Open House and Wine Walk, we're back to full steam. Those tickets will go on sale October 1st up off of our website, which is windowntown.org. And um, we will um, we place wineries in 14 businesses this year. Plus, we have the three tasting rooms downtown that you'll be able to try those some new wines that maybe you haven't tried. So those tickets will go on sale. Um, we will um, limit the tickets to 500. It's hard to say that we're back to full steam ahead, but it is um, from 12 to 5 that day, and it's a fun day to kick off the holiday season downtown. You had the uh, the Possibilities Tour a couple of uh, months ago on a fairly warm July day. We did. A um, lot of interest in the old Wenatchee Fire Station, mm -hmm. just kitty quarter from where we're sitting right now. A mm -hmm. lot of people are interested in that particular piece of property, aren't they? They are. And there's a lot of interest right now because, as you know, the city's putting that historic building, plus across the street, the historic um, police station, up for sale. Um, a lot of interest. Our biggest possibility tour and hottest in, in history, but we got to tour the Wenatchee World. There's lots of space in the old historic Wenatchee World building, and people were just interested in overall what's happening downtown and what's available. It was a hot but very successful tour that ended. We got a sneak peek at the new city hall, which was super fun to have the mayor and Laura um, Gloria at the at the city kind of show it off. And we can't wait for that ribbon cutting to happen sometime. I think in November. 
November, I hear. It's coming. Yeah, the contractors are getting done. In yeah. fact, uh, I looked the other day, the actual chambers will be hosting their meetings. They're pretty much done with that. I know. So much nicer, yeah. much airier, uh, high ceilings. Uh, yep. Uh, just feels better and really welcoming when you come in. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're crammed into a closet. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. um, so the Revitalized con Conference, uh, first Fridays, Trick or Treat in the Ave, Holiday, Open House, and Wine Walk. We've got a couple minutes left. What am I forgetting? So there's a job fair we're hosting with the a job fair, Wenatchee yes. Valley fact, Chamber of Commerce. This is the piece of paper I printed yeah, up and forgot that's to That's okay. Look at. So once again, we did two last year. We'll do one. It's on the 20th, which guess what is a week from tomorrow. Um, it will be at Pibus from 10 until 3. We have a little, we have like 40 um, businesses coming that are looking for employees. These are great jobs. So if you're interested at all, we'll be in the Pibus Event Center and that will be next Wednesday again. This is a joint um, effort between us and the Chamber of Commerce because that's the number one request we're still hearing from our businesses. They aren't staffed up and we're going into the fourth quarter. So timing, it's a free um, event. You can come and see what's out there. So if you're looking for a job or know someone that is, please spread that word. And then I'm going to make you bring me back to talk about our brand new event that will happen on the 3rd of December. Very fun and family friendly. And we'll be able to, um, I'll be able to tell you about it, but I'm not going to, so you have to bring me back. So I can bring you some coffee. The, I, I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that. Again, the job fair is uh, Tuesday, September 20th at the at the local tele event center Excuse at me? the Pivus Public uh, Market. And this is, we talked about this before. This was never an issue before COVID. No. We're through COVID for the most part. Uh, yeah. Things are, are back to normal, and yet they still can't find warm bodies to uh, to man the till and bring the food and that kind of stuff. It's still These an are issue. great jobs. These are great jobs that are out there and benefited jobs. And it's really an interesting place we're in that this, this amount of jobs are out there and it is a really, um, it's a really interesting time nationwide. It isn't just here. People who um, have pulled themselves because of COVID out of the job market, and they're waiting to come back into the job market. So, um, if you know, again, if you know anyone, spread the word. Um, it is, it's a really good opportunity. Some will be hiring on the spot, and they'll have applications and taking resumes. So come prepared if you are, or if you want to pop in on your lunch hour, um, from what you're doing now I might be wanting to do something else so yes and the last thing I want to say before you let me go and I'm gonna make you bring me back for my first time ever I just want to say thank you to local tell NCW live for my organization in my tenure it has been critical to get the word out and given us a great opportunity so thank you thank you thank you such community hearts this business has and um, I can't I can't tell you what it means to nonprofits like myself so thank you Anytime, the soon to be outgoing One Action Downtown Association Executive Director Linda Hagman, as you mentioned, making her very first appearance this week on Wake Up One Valley. And you, I will have you on again, I okay. promise you. All right. Because we have some fun to talk about it, yeah, can't we? Absolutely. I'll even bring the props with me. Yes, yeah, please. Okay. Coffee. That's okay. next time. And coffee. Yep. You're watching Wake Up One Valley. We will be right back. Hey, Wenatchee Valley, this is Ben Griffin. I'm here with my friend, Eddie the Yeti. He wants to share some big news. Arctic Refrigeration is now employee-owned and has a new name, Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration. I want you to remember this summer, when you're hot and sweaty, call the Eddie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, it's called the Yeti, Y-E-T-I, not called the Eddie. Whatever. We are a factory-authorized Bryant dealer. 
whatever it takes. Give us a call at Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration at 509-662-5911. Get a little oompa back in your life by visiting the 24th annual Leavenworth Oktoberfest at the Town Toyota Center in Wenatchee. Your thirst will be satisfied with a variety of authentic German beer, and your hunger will be filled with German brats right off the grill. The sounds of oompa will be delivered up in two venues with live nonstop entertainment. Don't miss out. For for more information or to purchase tickets, log on to LeavenworthOctoberfest.com. Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Sometimes the world is a black tuxedo and I'm a pair of brown shoes. That's how this day is going. Temperatures around the valley right now. Uh, here in the big city, we're at 52 degrees. Out in the basin, a Friday year at 50. Moses Lake, 48 degrees. OMAC, 52 degrees. Downtown Dryden, 48. Suburban Dryden, 48. And a real quick look at the air quality because if you notice, if you're looking behind me, things are a little hazy. Air quality right now. Uh, in Cashmere's 87, that's moderate. Leavenworth is at 68, that's moderate. Here in the Valley, 32, which is technically good, but doesn't look too good to me. If you look behind uh, my, uh, my shoulder. Now, we had, of course, we had all that wind coming in Friday afternoon and Friday night, just as predicted. Scoured out all the skies. We had a pretty nice, quiet, although somewhat cool weekend. We only got to 67 on Saturday, our normal high is 77. And on Sunday, we got up to uh, 73 degrees. We're gonna be up to right around normal today. You briefly saw that slide about the blowing dust, which is gonna be coming your way to the north of us and out in the basin on Tuesday and Wednesday as a push of northerly winds comes in. Uh, not a particularly strong system, but certainly those areas that have a tendency to be susceptible to the wind, that's gonna be the case on I-90 between George to Sprague. That's a long stretch of I-90 on uh, Highway 97 to the north of us from Riverside to Brewster and up to the north of us on Highway 2 from Waterville to Davenport. You could be dealing with some blowing dust because, of course, the fields have been plowed and the soil is not going to be sticking to the earth a great deal. So just a heads up for you folks planning on traveling on those locations. Speaking of traveling, Highway 2, Stevens Pass between the Index and Skycomish is still closed because of the Bolt Creek Fire. This has been going on for about 10 days now. A lot of heavy timber, a lot of uh, dense timber, and uh, some trees are burning and then falling either on the highway itself or close to it. The DOT and the BLM, the uh, Bureau of Land Management, they're gonna reassess the situation today. But right now, it's put a great deal of stress, not only on I-90, Stoquamity Pass, because of the extra traffic, you can't take Stevens all the way through, but also on Blewett Pass, too. So. Heads up on there, more traffic than normal. And there's a lot of construction projects going on on I-90 on top of all of that. From the National Weather Service, that way if you don't like the weather, you can blame the government. Sunshine today, although still hazy, with a high about 79. Some of this haze will be lifting as the relative humidity begins to get drier and drier. That's going to allow the smoke to get higher up in the atmosphere. 46 for the overnight low tonight. Sunshine on Tuesday, as we already mentioned. Going to be a little windy. It's going to be breezy in the morning. A wind out of the west about 7 to 14 miles an hour. And then it'll change to the northeast, uh, the direction anyway. And the winds could gust us in the Wenatchee Valley, 20 to 25. And in some locations, above 30 miles an hour on Tuesday. So we'll keep a close eye on what that does to the area wildfires. Tuesday night, mostly clear, 52 for the overnight low. Uh, and then we uh, warm up Wednesday, 82. Brief little weak system 
uh, could bring a little bit of light rain in some locations on Thursday, and then we warm up with high pressure building in on Saturday and Sunday with highs climbing back up to around 80 degrees. And happy birthday, Jimmy Fallon, the host of The Tonight Show, who is 48 years old today. Provided the show isn't canceled, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.